Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a little different from what I usually upload on my channel. It's going to be an informational video on the replica luxury good market. Basically what started this is I came across a lot of videos on YouTube kind of showing fake designer bag hauls and fake designer bag collections and I realized that when I was watching them and you know just scrolling through I don't know anything about the replica industry. Um, I don't think this is something that is talked about so I decided to do my own research on the subject and this video is basically going to just be sharing with you what information I found. So I don't want to come across as trying to persuade you to either not buy or buy replica goods. This video is purely informational and so you can take the information that I provide in this video and make your own decision based on that. To begin, I want to just make clear the replica counterfeit industry is made up of many different sectors. I mean, this can include things from car parts to even medications, but I'm going to be focusing mainly on the luxury replica goods like handbags such as Louis Vuitton, YSL, Chanel, etc. So I think it's important to start talking about the consumers and how we're affected by this industry, both positively and negatively. When we think about how the luxury market has evolved over the last few decades, it's clear that luxury goods have become more common and sought after by all generations and social classes. So it's not only the established, older, rich women that are buying these bags, it's everyone of all social classes, young people. This shift can be attributed to social media and the influencers in our society, such as celebrities who market luxury items on a constant basis because you know, they go out of their house, they take pictures, they are constantly marketing these luxury goods because it's all they wear, it's all they own. So this in turn creates a desire for luxury goods by a much larger group of people than before. We can look at the most influenced group as the younger generation, so people my age, between 20 and 30, even younger, who are most likely to desire luxury goods but are least likely to be able to afford them. So naturally, this is why the counterfeit and replica industry, which is estimated to be worth $2.3 trillion, has boomed because it allows consumers to experience luxury goods for a fraction of the price. To further support the growing counterfeit industry, the accessibility to replicas has expanded due to the internet and modern day shipping methods, which allows consumers to purchase fake goods discreetly online and not in person. So we don't have to go on the street anymore to buy fake bags. We can just kind of, from the comfort of our home, go on the computer and order a fake Louis Vuitton bag. So shifting the subject a little bit, I wanna talk about this other group that has been emerging. This group consists of people that do have the ability to purchase luxury goods, but have chosen to instead acquire the replicas because one, they wanna save money, and two, they believe that these companies do not deserve more money or customer loyalty for a wide variety of reasons. But one being, for example, in recent events, you know, certain luxury brands such as Gucci have entered the limelight for releasing racist designs as well as been exposed for a lack of diversity. So naturally, this turns away a large group of consumers who no longer want to spend thousands of dollars on a company that they disagree with. But there's also a group of consumers that the replica industry really hurts. And that would be people that want to buy real luxury goods online pre-loved and instead have to deal with fake bags online being sold for real prices. According to LVMH, which I want to note is a luxury goods group that includes Louis Vuitton, Givenchy, and Celine, 90% of the Louis Vuitton and Dior items offered on eBay in the first half of 2006 were counterfeits. So as you can imagine, this makes it extremely difficult for people that want to buy real luxury goods to prevent being taken advantage of. Now since 2006, there have been efforts to cut down on this percentage. But today, fake goods disguised as real goods are still very prevalent and many people are still being tricked and stolen from. I kind of wanted to film this video and warn you about these scams. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I was sold a fake Chanel bag. 
So it makes me sad that we're still in this world where people are like trying to pawn off fake bags. Now, in addition, another negative that we experience as consumers by the replica industry is that there is no ingredient or production regulation forced upon the counterfeit industry because it's illegal. So they don't have regulations that they follow. And this in turn leaves the door open for consumers to receive goods that contain things like toxic dyes and chemicals, which basically leaves legal recourse and consumer rights non-existent. So as you can imagine, the success of the counterfeit industry mainly benefits replica distributors who, thanks to a shift from in-person to online purchases, have been able to illegally distribute their shipments all around the world much more easily. Statistics show that small parcels constitute 63% of all customs seizures making them more important than large shipments in terms of numbers. Small parcels are much harder to detect by customs agents, and so this leaves the profits made by counterfeiters practically unaffected by the law. Therefore, this $2.3 trillion industry has been allowed to thrive untaxed and unregulated, which opens the doors to more illegal activities funded by this untraceable amount of money earned selling counterfeit goods. The truth is that when we go online and we buy these fake bags, we don't know where our money is going or what it's, what it's funding. But decades of research and investigation have led replica profits to undesirable destinations, probably the most ominous being terrorism. In a 2002 advisory entitled Financing Terror Profits from Counterfeit Goods Pay for Tax, the Customs Service warned of an increasingly close connection between transnational crime and terrorism, with the profits from counterfeit and pirated goods being the strongest link. Now, in the same year, an Al-Qaeda training manual recommended explicitly that selling fakes is a good way of supporting terror sales. More recently, it was determined that the attacks that occurred in Charlie Hebdo in Paris in 2015 were funded by the counterfeit handbag business. Now, another disheartening reality of some, but I want to note not all, replica factories is that they are worked by children. A misconception may be that they are taken against their will and, you know, forced to work, but the reality is that it's usually an older family member, or even a parent, who sends their children to work at these factories so that they can make money for the household. Now, you may be thinking, if they're willingly going, what's the issue? Well, the problem is that an unregulated illegal practice has no labor regulation. And so sometimes these children are physically abused in order to produce more goods. In addition, with this unregulation, adults are also not immune to mistreatment. Some examples of adults being mistreated are reported by the China Labor Watch, who found instances in which owners seized the workers' identification papers, making finding work elsewhere impossible. Okay, so now let's shift our attention to the luxury brands because this discussion really could not be complete without looking into the role that luxury brands play within the industry. The fact of the matter is the replica market would not exist without the luxury market and the inaccessibility and exclusivity that luxury brands encourage within society often is what drives people to go extra lengths to obtain their designs, whether that means spending large sums of money on their goods or engaging in the legal market of replicas. Now, over the years, luxury companies have also morphed from an identity of emphasizing quality to an identity of emphasizing logos, which has tempted them to relocate production to low-cost countries. Now, unfortunately, some luxury companies have given in to this temptation, which makes it increasingly more difficult to control the quality and manufacturing processes as they once could. Even in instances where labels claim to be made in France or made in Italy, 
there exists a lack of transparency. Giorgio Bona Carso, a chemical supplier who sells products to Chinese factories that manufacture Italian shoes, claims that many Italian shoe brands will do some part of the operation in China and then finish the shoes in Italy to be allowed to still put made in Italy on their labels since labeling laws are mostly based on the final point of production. So lowering quality while increasing prices drives consumers even harder to turn to replica goods, especially since replicas have improved their quality drastically since the emergence of the counterfeit industry. There has been an effort by luxury companies to tackle replicas. For example, LVMH, which I mentioned earlier, employs at least 60 lawyers and spends $17 million annually on anti-counterfeiting legal action. However, in a strange way, replica designer goods do in some instances serve as marketing pieces for luxury brands. There have been reports of even some celebrities wearing fake designer items, which most likely has prompted their fans to buy the real thing. So I want to end this discussion by saying that in conclusion, the success of both replica distributors as well as luxury brands really depends on us, the consumers, and where we choose to spend our money. So I want to open up the comments to hear how you guys view this topic. I know it's something very controversial, but like I said, I think it's something that we should still be aware of. But I want to just say thank you so much for taking the time to let me share with you my research. And if you have any additional information to share with others, be sure to leave it in the comments. Until then, I hope to see you in my next video.